Hi, my name is Daniel Turner from the uh, Weber State University Outdoor Program. Welcome to the trailhead for the Bloomington Canyon Yurt. Uh, we are here ready to load up. Um, if you are here with us, your adventure's already begun. So uh, join with us as we pack up the sled. Keep in mind, if you're bringing a snowmobile from Utah, you need to have it registered here in Idaho. Uh, join with us as we uh, take off on the trail. On behalf of Weber State University's outdoor program, welcome to the Bloomington Canyon Yurt. The Bloomington Canyon Yurt is made possible by the support of Weber State University student fees. Right, this here's what we call a water jacket. Uh, we put snow in here to melt it while the fire is going. Uh, while we're starting the fire or for overnight use, we ought, we ought to take the uh, water jacket off to make sure that it doesn't overheat. When starting the stove, you need to make sure that the door of the yurt is closed first and foremost. Make sure that your uh, flue here is in the vertical position. And then please don't use any flammable material in, uh, to light the stove with, such as gas or white gas. It will also be beneficial if you make sure that the, uh, the air vents here are fully open when starting the stove and close the door once you've got a flame started. Guys, this is a hatchet, not used for chopping wood, but for splitting kindling. If you arrive at the yurt and find that the stove is full of ash, please take care to use the metal shovel and also a metal container that we have here specifically for ash. And uh, make sure that you uh, uh, do not clean it out when the fire is hot and make sure those cools are cool. Here in the woodshed you'll find an ash can specifically uh, for the ash that you clean out of the fireplace. Uh, be sure that the ash is cooled off before putting it in the can. Howdy partner, this is Mike Henderson, we were State Outdoor Program. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the woodshed in the bathroom here. So as you can see, we've got it tied shut. Make sure every time you get in and out, you go ahead and tie it back up closed. Just keep the critters out, any snow, anything like that. As we open it up, you will have your winter's supply of wood. Alright folks, so the yurt itself is actually heated by a wood-burning stove. In order to do that, we need wood. So, at the end of your trip, make sure you replenish the wood pile inside the yard for the next participant to come in. In order to do that, we've got our handy-dandy redneck wood splitter. So when you go into the woodshed, go ahead and fill that tire up, and inside the yard, you will find the maul. Make sure you're careful with this. Make sure you know how to use a maul. And I'll go ahead and show you how this is done. Once you've filled it, you're going to want to make sure you get all the man you can and go ahead and give it a big old swing. Sometimes it gets stuck. As you can see, it takes big pieces and turns it into little pieces. Hi guys, Ben Botter here with the Weaver State Outdoor Program. I'm going to talk a little bit about the bathroom. It's a good idea first when you get here to establish a key such as the toilet paper or a hat, a helmet, something like that so someone knows you're in there. No surprises that way. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, bathroom here. As you can see, we got our pit toilet here. What we're going to do is make sure that we don't put any toilet paper in there. What you're going to do is there's brown paper bags inside the yurt. We'll bring those out. Fill those with your toilet paper, and at the end of your departure, go ahead and burn your refuse. Oh, hey guys. Uh, we prefer that you take a few steps away from the woodshed uh, to go number one. This is a great area with a great view. 
look like it right now, but we get quite a bit of snow here at the yurt. It's real important to make sure that the woodshed and the yurt stay dug out. As soon as you arrive here at the yurt, you ought to find the, uh, the broom and the extension here behind the door. Go ahead and extend the handle of that broom and use it carefully on top of the yurt so you don't puncture the tarp. wastewater area. This is where you're going to strain all your food, scraps, and your uh, dishwater from your pots and pans. This strainer here is located behind the door on the bunk bed. Just go, sh go ahead and uh, make sure you strain all your food as you're coming out like that. You can also take your pots and pans and rinse them out with a little snow. The lights here at the Bloomington Canyon Yard are solar powered by our uh, Goal Zero solar system. If you take a look here at the solar box, um, here in the uh, right hand corner you'll see a power button. This must be illuminated, the green LED light must be illuminated in order to have power. You also need to make sure that you illuminate the 12 volt area here in order for the lights to turn on. Each one of the lights here at the Bloomington Canyon Yurt also have a on off switch. All right, here in the yurt we've got the uh, yurt kitchen. Just want to introduce you to a couple items here. Inside the red box here we have a few cooking items, a few miscellaneous items, extra TP for the restroom, and obviously your bags for the pit toilet and toilet paper. We've got our silverware and a couple of miscellaneous towels and things to dry dishes here, as well as uh, dish buckets for dishwater and rinse water. Inside the closed container here, we keep all of our plates, cups, and cooking utensils to keep rodents out of them. Please make sure you seal the bucket when you leave. On top here, we've got a snow melting pot and some falling spoons. Snow melting pot, just make sure that uh, you keep this dry and clean when for storage. And then lastly, we've got our three burner Coleman stove here. Make sure that you keep the gas off when not in use. All your food items here at the yurt should be securely stored in one of our buckets. This cuts down on rodents and the potential for rodents to enter the yurt. While the yurt doesn't rest directly in avalanche terrain, it's important you take the proper precautions. Make sure your beacon, probe, and shovel are present, and you have good batteries for them. Right outside the front door of the yurt, we've got red pine, which is directly south of the yurt. Off to the north, just to the left as you exit, we have Paris Peak, and over here behind the yurt, we've got Bloomington Peak. Each one of these offers very good skiing within a close proximity. Chopping block, that's so far away. We'll knock this out right into here. Whoa, 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 gear down there, big shifter. <laughs> this could result in a contract violation here at the Bloomington Canyon Yurt. Whoa, total mind blower. Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you guys doing? This is a definite contract violation. This is the drinking water area. Because we rely heavily on the, the clean snow for drinking water here at the yurt, please use the designated waste area for all waste. Whoa, 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 bring those ponies in there, Daniel. Safety first here. Destruction of buckets is a yurt no-go, and it's gonna cost you. Oh, man. Rookies. Working the hamstrings, getting those glutes, Getting swole. Now you see he's got a flat back and a tight core. Really emphasizing that core though here. It's a deep burn! You gotta feel that.
Well guys, we hope you enjoyed your stay here at the yurt. When you leave, go ahead and make sure you lock the door. For the next group. Until next time.